Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. Today we're going to be going through microscopes and this is one of the topics that um, I frequently get requests in my tutoring to have help with going through the magnification calculation, the conversion of units and mainly the calibration of the eyepiece gratitude. So we'll be covering all of that in today's session. So if you want, get some paper at the ready for some of the questions and to make notes as we go. So this all falls under topic two within the methods of studying cells. And once we've gone through the cells, it's knowing how scientists discovered that these are the internal structures that cells have. And this has been worked out through um, using microscopes and cell fractionation and ultrafugation. Now this video we're just going to be focusing on the types of microscopes, magnification and calibration of the eyepiece graticule. Um, but for the link to the next video on cell fractionation and ultracentrifugation, that'll be at the end of this one. So you can just click the link to that one. So microscopes, this is something that you did cover at GCSE. And there are three key types of microscopes. You have the optical or light microscope and the electron microscopes. But there's two types of electron microscope. You have a transmission or a scanning electron microscope. Now, the first bit of recap to have a go at is, can you still remember from GCSE the definition of what magnification means and resolution or resolving power? So pause the video at this point to see, can you come up with a definition for those two? Right, the definition for magnification is um, the magnification of the microscope is referring to how many times larger the image that you look at is compared to the actual size of the object. The resolution of a microscope is the minimum distance between two objects which they can still be viewed as separate. So by that we mean if you're looking at your sample through the eyepiece under the microscope, the minimum distance in which you can still see two different parts of the cell as being separate rather than then they have just blurred in to look like one single point. So the resolution or the resolving power in an optical microscope is determined by the wavelength of light and in an electron microscope, it's the same idea. It's the wavelength of the beam of electrons. So let's have a look at these microscopes in a bit more detail. At this point, I've just split it into the two types generically. So the optical microscope will be the type of microscope you're familiar with. This is what schools and colleges will have access to. And in this case, you have a beam of light being released by your lamp, or sometimes it's a mirror to reflect um, a plugged in lamp. And that light then gets shone up and is condensed. And that is what creates the image. Now you have a much lower resolution on light microscopes compared to electron microscopes because light has a longer wavelength. And that is what determines the resolution of microscopes. It also has a lower magnification in comparison, but you can get color images. So what you're viewing, you will see those real colors and you can use living samples. In contrast, the electron microscope, whether it's scanning or transmission, for both of these, this time, the source is going to be emitting a beam of electrons. And those will be condensed using electromagnets. And that is what is going to create the image. Electrons have a much shorter wavelength, so you get a higher resolution or resolving power. Higher magnification, um, but you can only get black and white images. And the samples that you view have to be in a vacuum, so completely um, vacuum, no air. And for that reason, you can't view living samples. So a bit more about the optical microscope. We've talked about the fact it has a lower resolution because of that longer wavelength. What that means in terms of its application is you can't see the inside of organelles in detail. And some of the small organelles you can't actually see at all. So I've got an example over here where we're looking at mitosis in um, root tips. And you can see 
that there is an outer layer, but you can't actually see the difference between the cell membrane and the cell wall. We know that this liquid in the middle must be the cytoplasm and stained purple are the chromosomes. So we can see where the nucleus is. But that is the level of detail you can see with the magnification and resolving power of an optical microscope. The electron microscopes. So going back to what I was saying, the specimen has to be in a vacuum. And the reason for that is the electron beam that is released, those electrons would be absorbed by the air and never even reach the sample or the specimen to create the image. So for that reason, it has to be prepared as a vacuum. And that's why you can't view living samples and you only get black and white images. So a bit more detail, the transmission electron microscope. So transmission means to pass through, and that is what is happening in a transmission electron microscope. That beam of electrons, some will be absorbed by the specimen, some will pass through. And that's why you get these different shades, the white and the black. And the darker it is, the more electrons have been absorbed. And that's how you get this detailed image below. So it's a 2D image, it's only black and white, but you can see this here is our chloroplast inside of a plant cell. And you can see the internal structures, you can see these thylakoid membranes, you can see the grana, those stacks of the membranes as well. Scanning electron microscope, you don't have to have these very, very thin samples like you do with the transmission. This time, it's not going to be transmitting, so passing through the specimen. Instead, it will scatter and reflect off the surface. And because of the different depths of the specimen, that will affect the scattering of the electrons. And that then creates this 3D image. So the scanning electron microscope will give you details um, on the image to do with the texture and the 3D depths of either your cells or your organelles. So moving on then, magnification is one of the math skills linked to microscopes and it's used with optical microscope images. So the formula, again, straight from GCSE, image size equals actual size times magnification. Now I've deliberately written it this way rather than as the magnification formula because I think this is the easiest way to remember it. I am. So I being image, A is the actual, M is the magnification. And then once you can remember I am, you can rearrange the formula to work out magnification or actual size. Now that is um, a skill from GCSE Maths, but if you can't remember that, I'll link up the top here. Just click to see one of the GCSE videos I have on rearranging the formula, just to recap to get your A-level math skills up scratch. So the other thing that you'll need to be able to do is one of the math skills is converting units. And that's because your image size, so this is when you're gonna be measuring your microscope image, which is also called a micrograph, um, you'll be using a millimeter ruler. So your image size will be recorded in millimeters. The actual size of cells and organelles is much smaller. It's going to be in micrometers. And in order to use this formula, you have to have both of those sizes in the same unit. So if you have recorded your image size in millimeter, then you'll need to convert it into micrometers so you have the same units. So to go from millimetres to micrometres, you multiply however many millimetres you have by a thousand. So if you measured two millimetres, that means you have 2,000 micrometres. Or you could do the conversion the other way around. If your actual size is in micrometres, you can convert your image size into micrometres as well. And in which case, if you had 2,000 micrometers to convert that back into millimeters, that'd be divide by 1,000 and you have two millimeters. So just to go through a worked example, we've got here, it's a bit blurry, but I'll put in all the details. You could be asked to work out what is the magnification of this micrograph image. And they've given you a scale bar. And if you're shown a scale bar, what that means is the length of that bar is representing an actual size of 50 micrometers on this image. 
So our scale bar is the actual size, and that is 50 micrometers. What you then need to do to work out the magnification, we know to need to know the image size. And you don't need to measure any cells for this. You are measuring what is the image size of that scale bar. So you'd line up your ruler and measure how many millimeters long your scale bar is. And in this example, it's 20 millimeters when I measured it. So now we know we'd be doing our image size, which is 20 millimeters, divided by our actual size of the scale bar, which is 50 micrometers. But we need to get those into the same units. So I'm going to convert 20 millimeters into the micrometer units to match the scale bar. So I need to do 20 times 1,000. So that gives me 20,000. That is our image size divided by our actual size is 50. So our magnification of this image is 400 times magnification. So finally, the last skill is the use of an eyepiece graticule and how you calibrate it. So I'm just gonna show you this image here of the microscope first of all, just so you can see where the eyepiece graticule is located. So this eyepiece graticule is a glass disc which is within the eyepiece. And that glass disc has a scale scratched or etched onto it. And that is so you can line it up on top of whatever you're visualizing to see how many divisions on your eyepiece graticule does the nucleus cover, for example. And that can then be used to measure the size, the actual size of the objects that you're viewing under the microscope, rather than using the formula that we saw on the previous slide. However, it's not quite as straightforward as that, because as you're using your um, light microscope, you will be potentially moving between these different objective lenses. And each lens is a different magnification. And what that means is the divisions on this eyepiece graticule scale will be worth different distances depending on how magnified the image is. And that's why we have to calibrate the eyepiece graticule each time we use it at a new magnification. So to calibrate it, you need to use a second scale, which is called a stage micrometer. And this is a glass slide. It looks quite like a um, glass microscope slide. And it's called a stage micrometer because this is the scale that you'll place on the stage and it's measuring distances in micrometers. So the scale on it, now mine isn't quite to scale, but that scale that you have scratched onto this piece of glass is two millimeters long. And each single division is worth 10 micrometers. Now I've only done every 10 divisions on this, because that's what I could fit in on the diagram. So one division is worth 10 micrometers. So 10 of these divisions is um, 100 micrometers long. So if we go through step by step, then how you would use the stage micrometer and the eyepiece graticule to calibrate the graticule. So step one, you would place your stage micrometer on the stage look through your eyepiece and this is what you should see. You have the eyepiece graticule scale and then line that up directly next to your stage micrometer scale. So that's step one, line them up so they're next to each other as you can see in this image. Step two, you need to count how many divisions on the eyepiece graticule scale fit into one division on your micrometer scale. Now you might find that easier to work out how I'm doing it in this worked example. We can see here that we have 20 divisions from the eyepiece graticule scale fit into 10 divisions on the stage micrometer scale. So I've got 20 fitting into 10, or in other words, two of the divisions from the eyepiece graticule scale fit into one division of the stage micrometer scale. So we have a ratio of two divisions to one. So now we've got that, we can link it back to what we said about stage micrometers. On our stage micrometer, one division is always worth 10 micrometers. 
So you can use that to then work out at this magnification, what is one division worth on the eyepiece graticule. So we said one division on the micrometer scale is 10 micrometers. We said two divisions fit into one on the micrometer. And if one division is worth 10, but two fit in each time, it's 10 divided by two. And we know then that on the eyepiece graticule, one division is worth five micrometers at the current magnification. So now you can take out your stage micrometer and put in whatever slide you want to use to measure the distances or um, size of some of the cells or organelles. So I've gone back to the slide that we saw earlier on. And in this case, I'm going to measure the um, distance or the length of the nucleus in this example. Now you would have all of the subdivisions. I've just not shown it in this image. So where we've got 40 to 50, 50 to 60, you would have an extra 10 division so you could see 41 42 43 and so on so we've said that we've worked out that our eyepiece graticule at this magnification one division is worth five micrometers so i'm now going to measure to see how many divisions the nucleus covers um, and i'm estimating that is 13 divisions we've got 10 and there may be three more so the nucleus is 13 divisions long one division is worth 15, so multiply that by our 5. Um, uh, so one division is worth 5, and we've got 13 divisions. So that means in total, the nucleus actual size, this magnification, we've worked out, um, it's 65 micrometers. Now, it will be that um, distance, or length even, at every magnification. Um, the only thing that would change is what one division on the eyepiece graticule is worth at different magnifications. So that's it for microscopes. So just to go over again, a summary of some of the key points you need to know. You need to know the differences between optical and electron microscopes. Um, and the electron microscope has a much higher resolving power and magnification. And that's why the electron microscopes can be used to see the details inside of organelles. The formula um, I am, so image size equals actual size times magnification can be used to work out the actual size of a structure or the magnification from um, your microscope image. And lastly, the actual size of structures can be measured using the microscope if you have an eyepiece graticule in the eyepiece, but you have to calibrate it first with the stage micrometer um, to take into account the different magnifications. And that's it for microscopes for A-level biology. Now, there are quite a lot of linking videos to this. So if you want to just go over some of the content or the math skills, um, over here, I'll link to the rearranging the formula, as well as you've got your eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cell structures. And lastly, if you aren't subscribed already, click the logo here to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the latest videos.